Hey guys, welcome to JR Sports Cards Chronicles. Today, I'm going to be doing a uh, a reveal of a, a vintage card. Um, this is a uh, player that not a lot of people know. Those that collect vintage uh, know of of this player. He's considered uh, one of the greatest players, if not the greatest player of all time. Um, but unfortunately, he never played in the major leagues, so he never got the um, the notoriety and the prestige that uh, you know he he should have he deserved. Um, his name is Martin De Higo uh, from Cuba, and I'm gonna read you a little excerpt of his uh, based on his biography and also of what other uh, baseball players, and major leaguers. Um, thought of him who actually played with him or against him. So uh, he was nicknamed, nicknamed Mr. Versatility or the Master. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read this, this uh, brief excerpt here. So Martin DeHigo could do it all on the baseball field. And during a lengthy career that spanned multiple decades, leagues, and continents, the man known as the Master did everything except play in the National or American League. A quote credited to fellow Hall of Famer Johnny Mize, who spent time playing with DeHigo in Caribbean winter ball, sums up the five-tool star's aura. DeHigo was the only guy I ever saw who could play all nine positions, manage, run, and switch hit. Indeed, DeHigo may have been the most valuable player in baseball history, playing all over the diamond and excelling as both a pitcher and a hitter. Another baseball player, Monty Irvin, describes that he was the best ball player of all time, black or white. Hall of Famer Roy Campanella, who played in the Negro Leagues from 1937 to 1942 before joining the Brooklyn Dodgers, expressed a similar sentiment. DeHigo was one of the greatest I ever saw, Campanella said. He was a tremendous hitter, had great power, could hit for an average, everything. I played against him in the Cuban Winter League in Mexico and in the Negro National League when he was with the New York Cubans. Here are some key points to know about DeHigo, who was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1977. He was born in Matanzas, Cuba, in 1905. DeHigo was 17 years old when he began playing professional baseball for Havana of the Cuban League in 1922. In 1923, he debuted for the Cuban Stars. Made up of mostly Cuban-born players, the team competed in the United States as part of the Eastern Colored League. In his Negro Leagues career, which stretched into the 1940s, DeHigo was also played for the Homestead Grays, the Hilldale Athletic Club, and the New York Cubans. During this time, DeHigo continued to play ball in Cuba, Mexico, Venezuela, and the Dominican Republic. Stats from the time period are often incomplete and are considered unofficial for now, but the available numbers give you a sense of the all-around impact DeHigo had on the game. In the Negro Leagues database, DeHigo is credited with hitting over 300 and slugging north of 500 with 129 home runs in his career, including time spent in Latin America. On the pitching side, the database puts DeHigo at 101 wins with a 3.28 ERA. Meanwhile, the National Baseball Hall of Fame credits DeHigo with collecting more than 260 victories as a pitcher. DeHigo's performance in the Mexican League is the stuff of legends. Not only is the right-hander believed to have thrown the first no-hitter in league history, but he also was credited with recording a .92 ERA over 167 innings and simultaneously winning the batting title with a .387 average in 1938. DeHigo was an icon in his native country, where he was known as the Immortal. Hall of Famer Minnie Minoso, who was also born in Cuba and went on to play in the National League before making his MLB debut in 1949, idolized DeHigo in his youth. Quote, DeHigo once let me carry his shoes and glove, and that's how I got into the ballpark down there in Cuba when I was a kid, Minoso said, according to baseball historian Peter Jarkman. He was a big man, all muscle, with not an ounce of fat on him. He helped me by teaching me how to play properly. When I played a few years in the Negro Leagues with the New York Cubans, DeHigo was past his prime and just a manager then, so I never really competed against him as a player. But it is difficult to explain what a great hero was in Cuba. 
Everywhere he went, he was recognized and mobbed for autographs. I'd have to say he was responsible for getting me to the major leagues. He was a big man, but he was big in all ways, as a player, as a manager, as a teacher, as a man. Dehiko was the first Cuban-born inductee into the National Baseball Hall of Fame, and he remains the only person to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fames in Cuba, Mexico, and the United States. Dehiko's induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame came in 1951, when he was inducted into the Mexican Baseball Hall of Fame in 64. He completed the trifecta when he was enshrined in Cooperstown in 1977, six years after his death. So as you can see, uh, Martin Dehiko definitely impacted the game. Um, and again, a lot of the stats that are recorded are not even complete. I, I believe that I read in, in some other uh, site where I was uh, doing some research that there's about 10 or 11 years where he, he you know, his offensive uh, stats are empty. You know, these numbers are uh, just a, a glimpse of, of what he, um, what he accomplished in his career. And, uh, you know, there, there's definitely a lot of mythical stories of, uh, for instance, him uh, playing against Satchel Page twice and beating him twice, um, you know, throwing no hitters and, and you know, um, hitting home runs in ballparks that are much, much larger than any ballpark uh, current in, in the MLB and uh, hitting 400, over 400 in a season. I mean, the list goes on and on, playing all nine positions with great skill, pitching at a level that, you know, I mean, would be competitive with like Walter Johnson and other baseball greats. So he he was definitely um, one of the greatest, if not the, the greatest baseball player um, in the entire world. So without further ado, uh, here is the reveal of um, a card that I recently purchased and had it graded, bought it raw. Let me go ahead and uh, get the card ready here. All right, without further ado, here is the card. This is a 1945-46 uh, Caramelo Deportivo, Martin Dehigo, number 65, and it got a SGC1. Now these cards are very difficult to find uh, in any decent condition. Um, again, like I said, a lot of these cards were pasted to albums. Um, these cards came from Cuba. Um, you know, so just the fact that, you know, the trip and, and, you know, the, the, the conditioning and, and, you know, all that comes into play. Um, a lot of these cards, if not the majority are off centered greatly. And like I said, a lot of the cards are uh, have the backs pretty much peeled off because they were glued on to um, album books. So anyway, so I uh, picked this up um, raw and then had it graded. And this this copy is is I mean very well centered. I, I think this is one of the best centered copies I've ever seen. Um, it has some uh, wrinkling. So the, the, the design here, <clears throat> you see uh, like kind of all these uh, little wrinkles here. I think this is kind of, uh, basically it's it's not the design that's showing it. It's uh, small little wrinkles throughout the, uh, the front of the card here. Um, but it's very, very well centered. Very happy about this card. Um, you know, pretty good registration for the grade. And then as you can see in the back, it's the, the back is uh, peeled off here. But, uh, you, you know, you have a little bit of a biography here of the player, the uh, the brand of the card. Um, I forgot what it says down here. Um, but anyways, uh, just wanted to show this card off here. It's a beautiful card. I believe this is his rookie card, so uh, happy to uh, add this to the uh, PC. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, shout out to um, 
A Collector's Dream, Orlando, and also uh, the Mancini Collection, John Mancini. Uh, both of them have highlighted this this card and this player, and uh, you know, kind of got me uh, pointed in that direction. I started doing some research, and then that's kind of what led me to purchasing this car. So shout out to both both of those gentlemen and uh, really appreciate it. All right, guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and peace out.